Hello and welcome to Boxer's Shorts. I'm Adam Boxer and I'm a science teacher trying to help you understand more of GCSE science. In these short videos, I will try and take difficult concepts from GCSE science, break them down, um, help you understand them, and then do some practice questions on those concepts. In terms of some general tips for using these videos, definitely do not have your phone on or anywhere around you. It's a distraction and it means you won't be able to concentrate properly. The same applies for other tabs on your computer. So don't have your social media tabs open on your computer or laptop. It will just distract you. I'm going to ask you to do some questions. If you don't actually do them, you won't actually learn anything. So make sure when I do ask you to do those questions, you do them. And finally, let me know in the comments if there is a topic that you want me to cover. Thanks for listening. And remember, you can subscribe and just let me know if there's something you want me to do for you. Hi there, today we're going to be looking at power, energy and time. Just a reminder, uh, if you've got your phone on or anywhere near you, turn it off, put it away from you. If you've got any tabs open on your screen, you should not have those open, otherwise it'll be much harder for you to concentrate. Today we're going to be studying power, energy and time. In our last video, we looked at the different energy stores and the different energy transfers, which is how energy can be moved from an, from an object to another object or from a store to another store. Today we're going to be looking at another aspect to that. If we start, for example, with two objects. So I'm sitting here and right next to me, there is an electric radiator. And the electric radiator is heating everything around it. It's transferring energy all around it. Now, if I took a piece of bread and put it on my radiator, it might get a bit warm, but it would be a little while before that piece of bread started to burn or to turn to toast. On the other hand, in my kitchen, I've got a toaster. Now my toaster also transfers energy to the surroundings, in this case, to the bread, or the slice of bread that I put in my toaster. But it does it a lot quicker. And because it does it a lot quicker, my bread can turn to toast and if I do it too quickly my bread will even burn. We call this the power of a device. The power of a device. Now in physics power has a very specific meaning and it's about how quickly a device transfers energy. We measure that power in a unit called a watt or in watts and that's a capital W. One watt means one joule is transferred every second. So far, so straightforward. That means if I had two watts, that would be two joules transferred every second. Ten watts would be ten joules transferred every second. So if we go back to my toaster, my toaster is 800 watts, which means it's transferring 800 joules every second. Again, so far so good. Now let's say I take my toaster and my toaster in this case is 800 watts and it's transferring energy by heating to a slice of bread. Let's say I left it on for just one second. Now we know that means it would only transfer 800 joules of energy because each watt means one joule every second. If I've only got one second, it's 800 watts. Let's say I leave it on for two seconds. Okay, so if 800 watts means 800 joules every second, if I have it on for two seconds, that's gonna be 1,600 joules or double that. What I've done there is I've just times that by that. So 800 watts for two seconds means that this slice of bread gets 1,600, 1,600 joules. All right, let's say I left it on for 10 seconds. So 10 seconds would be 800 times 10, which is 8,000 joules. Because each of those seconds it's transferring 800 watts. Another way to kind of visually represent that 
is if I had say 10 seconds, I could break up my arrow into 10 bits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and this last bit there is gonna be 10. And in each of these, there's 800 joules. So in each one there, 800, 1,600, 2,400, 3,200, etc., all the way up to 1,000. And essentially all I've done is I've just times 800 by 10 to get 8,000. 800 by 10, each of those seconds is 800, gives me 8,000 joules of energy transferred in total across that 10 seconds. Which means that what I've done is I've taken the power of my toaster, I've timed it by the time that it's on, and that's given me the energy that has been transferred. This equation in letters is capital P times T equals E. The units are watts seconds and it has to be seconds and that gives me joules now we'll come back to this in a second now i personally like this way of writing it out because it makes sense to me but normally the way it's written is actually p equals e over t and that is just a simple linear rearrangement which means if you're timesing t on this side and you want to get rid of it move it to that side you need to divide both sides by t. Now lots of different people have lots of different ways of doing this. Me personally, I just like to learn this one form of the equation. That's the one that makes the most sense to me. And if I understand what power is, then it's really easy to work out the equation if I get to an exam and I happen to have forgotten it. Let's take a simple example and I'll show you the way that I calculate it and I will do another video another time uh, about how to, the, you know, my approach to calculations, but I'll kind of summarize it and do it really nice and quickly here. So let's say a device has a power of 1100, 1100 watts and is left on for 23 seconds. So the question is, what or how much energy is transferred? So the way that I solve these is using a method called the Descus method. And again, I'll do another video teaching exact, oh, sorry, you couldn't see that, that was off the screen. There we go. A device has a power of 1100 watts and is left on for 23 seconds. So the, the uh, method that I use is called the Descu or Descus method, which I'll do a different video on another time. But my first step is where I write down the data, which is my P equals 1,100 watts, and my T equals 23 S for seconds. I always write down my equation next, P times T equals E. S is for substitute, 1,100 times by 23 equals E, and it's probably best actually to align these, just so it's really super clear what I'm doing. My C step is to calculate it, so I get my calculator and you can of course always use a calculator in your science exam and you should do I'm getting fed up of marking papers where students haven't used their calculator and because of that they've made a they've made a mistake so it's a, it's a, it's a stupid because you could just use your calculator it's not maths just use a calculator 25300 equals e and then your final step is to put your u which is your unit which is joules and there we go, you've answered the question. Let's take one more example that's got a rearrangement in it, and then you can do some practice yourself. So let's say I've got the device has power 0.87 watts and transfers, I don't know, let's say 400 joules of energy, the question would be, how long did that take? So again, I write down my D, E, S, C, U, data. D stands for data, which is power P 
equals 0.87 W. I've got my energy as well, E equals 400 joules. Equation as before, P times T equals E. Now I look at my P, which is 0.87, and I'm timesing that by T, which I don't know yet, so I'm just gonna leave it as T, and that equals 400 joules. Now this looks exactly like a very simple or straightforward maths calculation. Like you could just have T as X and you'd know what to do with it. There's no GCSE student on the planet who doesn't know what to do with this. It tends to be though that when students see this stuff in science, they get really stressed out, but there's nothing to be stressed out. You'd know what to do with that. You know what to do with this. It's exactly the same thing. So you could just rewrite it if you liked. 0.87T equals 400. Your calculate step then is where you mess around with the equation and where you rearrange it uh, or you substitute, uh, sorry, or you uh, eliminate from both sides. So what we do at my school in the math department is you just divide both sides by 0.87 and that will give you T equals 400 over 0.87. I'm going to expand this section so I've got more space to work. I'm going to get my calculator 400 divided by 0.87 gives me 459.77 and then my units would therefore be 459.77 seconds and it's that straightforward in terms of using that equation. All right, you're now ready to try some problems. Um, the first four are here for you. Just beware when you get to the second two that you need to change your minutes into seconds. Now I will do a video at some point about unit conversions, which will include minutes and seconds, and as well as you know, changing kilos and micros and megas and all of that. But for the minute, just remember that one minute is 60 seconds. So two minutes is 120 seconds. You just times it by 60. So have a go at those first four questions. Now, as usual, pause and then when you're ready press play and you'll get the answers. So the answers to those ones are there for you and again a reminder that three and four you had to multiply by 60 so you've got 200 so question three is 200 times 120 question four is 1500 times 240 because you're moving up two seconds from the minutes. The next practice set is now up there for you. For these ones, you'll need to um, do some rearranging. Uh, now, as I said earlier, I like to do this once I've substituted all the numbers, but different people do it differently. It's completely up to you. As per usual, pause and then get ready to see the answers once you are done. Okay, so your answers are now up. They're all over there, and a reminder that there are some which mean which make you uh, change minutes into seconds. Once you've marked all of those, it's really important that you realise that um, it's not always going to be this straightforward because they just give you words, um, and they don't like the problem with these is that they're all in a row. So the first one is time, time, time. The next one is power, power, power. Then also power, power, power with a unit conversion. Normally, they'll just give you some numbers and expect you to figure out uh, which form of the equation or how to rearrange it you're going, you, you're going to need. So I put some mixed questions up here, which you need to uh, decide how you're going to answer those yourself in terms of which form of the equation or how you're going to rearrange the equation in order to get to your answer. So as per usual, do those questions, then pause, and then I'll show you the answers. So here are your answers. If you've got all those right, well done. Our next video will be on um, conservation of energy followed by energy efficiency uh, and efficiency calculations. Remember to subscribe and to let me know if there's a particular topic that you want me to cover.